so glad you're streaming with us today. Our coverage of the House vote for Speaker continues because still we have no Speaker. The House now voting to adjourn until 10 p.m. Eastern time tonight. And before that happens, joining me now, Republican Congressman from Georgia, Austin Scott. Congressman, it has been a Thank long you. four days. <laughs> oh, it's, it's all good, though, Kira. I mean, I think, I think we'll get the Speaker elected tonight. Uh, there, there's been a lot of work. Uh, on the rules package, I actually think while the Democrats will probably vote against it, I think that the Democrats will actually like the rules package one, once it's implemented because it's going to give the rank and file members of Congress a whole lot more influence over the legislation that passes. And so the, the last several years, basically, uh, leadership has, has put something in front of them and, and told them to vote yes on it. And they've walked out there and done it just like they did on the $1.7 trillion uh, omnibus bill a couple of weeks ago. And, and now what you're going to have is a system that, number one, make sure that the members of Congress, whether they be Democrat or Republican, have 72 hours to read any legislation that's coming to the floor. And, and it's going to open up the committee process where you'll have more debate and, and an amendment process, I think, that's going to be more fair uh, to everybody that's here other than leadership. And so Democratic leadership doesn't like it because of their top-down approach to governing. But I think that the members who are elected to represent their people, whether they be Democrat or Republican, are going to benefit from uh, the rules package. And that means that America will benefit from it. Okay, well, th th let's get down to the holdouts, because really that's what everybody has been talking about. Um, even talking to Congressman Pete Sessions yesterday, uh, referring to them as the rebellious members. We saw one, Ralph Norman from South Carolina, flip today. Uh, it surprised everybody. So your message to the, to the others, the remaining holdouts, like Matt Gates. Uh, um, uh, Lauren Bobart, um, that that have been pretty much sticking to their guns, that they're not going to flip. Do you think they are going to join Ralph Norman? I, I think that they want to see the rules on paper, and I think that once they see the rules on paper, it, once they're satisfied that those rules actually empower uh, the individual members of Congress to do the things that they were elected to do, then I think that uh, some, if not all of those six, will actually uh, support Kevin McCarthy and the rules package. And so it, it's not just about Kevin McCarthy. It, you you got to have the rules under which con Congress operates. Pelosi has operated under a top-down approach. Republican leadership has operated under a top-down approach. That's been very frustrating to members, whether they be Democrat or Republican. And and the last several days have been, been very constructive in, in crafting a set of rules that is going to empower of the individual members of Congress, just as just as our forefathers intended for us to. So I think that once they see that, you might not get all of the six, but I think you'll I think you'll get some of them. So you know, you brought up Nancy Pelosi. There's been a lot of comparison now between Nancy Pelosi, her leadership, what she was able to do, the deals she was able to make, the respect she was able to foster, how she was able to uh, make deals on with you know both both parties. And, and there is tremendous concern that Kevin McCarthy has gutted his power with all his concessions, that he's lost respect. Uh, the president of the United States saying this whole situation has been an embarrassment. So what makes you so confident that if indeed Kevin McCarthy does become the speaker, that he is going to be able to lead with force, inspiration, um, and influence? I, I think that if the members up here do their job, whether they be Democrat or Republican, and they use the rules to draft legislation and amendments that actually helps the general public, then, then I think we're going to see much more bipartisan legislation come through. Now, if the Democrats on, in their leadership operate the way Pelosi has, has done and just locks down and, and, and has them vote against anything and everything that Republicans uh, bring to the floor, then then it won't work. But but we are trying to give our democracy a chance to work through these rules. Now, to be candid with you about, about Speaker Pelosi, has she not put in the proxy rules, she wouldn't have been able to get what she did pass. Uh, pass because there, there are a lot of people that, that have been here for two years that I've served with that I've never met before because they haven't shown up for work. So on his way out of the Capitol, McCarthy was pressed on whether he's giving up too much. Uh, you know, a, a, he's giving up a, a big part uh, of his power. And he said that, that these reforms actually empower members of Congress. Is that a That's slippery right. slope to basically letting the inmates run the asylum? Is that allowing too much power, empowering them? 
well, we're not inmates. We're selected by uh, the people that we represent. We all represent a little better than 750,000 people. And so, you know, our job is to come in here and, and draft legislation that, that supports and benefits uh, the, the country, the people that we represent. And, and I want the individual members of Congress to have more power. If, if you're going to do it the way the Democrats have done it, if you're going to do it the way Joe Biden thinks it should be done, if you're going to do it the way Chuck Schumer thinks it should be done, then, then no member of Congress actually needs to show up un, until they actually uh, draft the legislation and then they just come in and rubber stamp it. That's the way it's been happening for the last several years. And if you look at the $1.7 trillion omnibus bill that they just passed, the Republicans in the Senate are just as guilty of that as are the Democrats in the House and the Senate. But, but nobody in the House had an opportunity to even read that bill. That's irresponsible. We've got $32 trillion in debt. We can't continue down this path. And, and so se things like 72-hour rules, which, which slow the process a little bit, just a couple of days, it, it may mean we have to work on a Friday or a Saturday. So what? That's what we're here to do. Now, if, 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 you, if you don't want to work, then you're not going to like the rules package. But if you want to do your job, if you want to get things done for your constituents, then, then by all means, we're going to have an amendment process. We're, we're going to have a, a rules package that empowers the individual members more so than they have ever been when you've got the top-down approach that Speaker Pelosi has. You know, Congressman, today is the second anniversary of the Capitol mm -hmm. insurrection. You voted to certify the election results on that dark day two years ago. Do you feel that it was appropriate to, to have this situation on the House floor on this day, on January 6th, I mean, just looking at what's happening with, with people like Matt Gates standing up and nominating Donald Trump to be speaker. I mean, come on, that was total political theatrics. There was a lot of talk about just the insensitivity that on this day, on this solemn day of remembrance, that we were watching our lawmakers bicker over these grievances versus governing like they should. Well, I, I was here on January 6th. It was a horrible day. Our, our police officers did a tremendous job. The National Guard that came in after them did a tremendous job. Uh, I believe in the Constitution. Uh, I spoke to multiple constitutional lawyers, and I cast my vote consistent with my oath, which is, which is sworn to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. I certainly voted for Donald Trump as president when I was at the ballot box, but as a member of Congress, I, I followed my oath. Uh, to uphold the Constitution, and, and, and that was my job on January the 6th. As for, as for today being January the 6th, the anniversary, two-year anniversary of it, it, it we, we can't stop doing uh, the work of the people, and so, so sometimes democracy takes a little longer than other forms of government, but it's the best form of government, and so we're going to have a good set of rules that's going to come forward uh, this afternoon so that, that people will be able to see it, and then, and then we're going to have a vote for a speaker and hopefully a vote on the rules package. I, I, I wish it had not uh, taken as long as it has, but I feel better about taking a little longer to get the right set of rules and the right person in the speaker's chair, and the right person is Kevin McCarthy, than to, than to just have done it on Monday uh, w w with a simple vote uh, as it would have been. Republican Congressman from Georgia, Austin Scott. Sure appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming to the camera. I know it's been a long four days. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you.